guys, welcome to another episode of The Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. My name is Nick. I'm Ian. And today, so previously we did underrated albums of the 80s. So today we're going to move a decade ahead and talk about some underrated albums of the 90s. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click on that link down below. Go check out The Vinyl Den Facebook group. I know I say it every episode, but just a cool place to continue the music conversation. There's also a couple other links. There's one for the Vinyl Den merch page. We got uh, some t-shirts and sweatshirts on there. There's a link for the Vinyl Den Spotify and Apple Music playlist where every week we're just compiling music we're talking about here on the channel, putting it uh, in, together in a uh, playlist for everyone to enjoy. There's also a link for the Vinyl Den Patreon page. If you want to support the show, it's always greatly appreciated. You can support the show for as little as a dollar a month. And of course, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give us the old thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time we release new episodes. So I'm going to kick this off with a great album from 1998. And I don't really know if I would really consider this an underrated album, because it was kind of a big album when it first came out. But I think the hype of it didn't really last really long, yeah. kind of faded out pretty quick. And I guess now looking back, you know, 24 Five, years. 25 years. Well, it came out in 98, so it'll be 24 years. Oh, 24 years, yeah, I guess. 24 years later, I consider it kind of an underrated album. And that is uh, all, the pl- all the Pain Money Can Buy. So, yeah, All the Pain Money Can Buy. I don't know why I couldn't think of the name. By Fastball. It's just a great album. This is the one that uh, the very first track on it, The Way, was like the big hit that was on this album. And I think a lot of people, that was probably the only thing they ever listened to off this. But uh, this is a really great album from beginning to end. There's a ton of great tracks on here that probably, The Way probably isn't even my favorite track on this album. This is one of those where once you kind of dig more into the album, you find some other stuff that's really great and equally as good, maybe if not better, than that big track. Yeah. So for my first one, let me preface this by saying that four out of my five selections for this aren't on vinyl or if they are on vinyl they're super rare and expensive yeah probably um except i'll, I'll put up a nice pictures of the albums he's yeah. talking about though and the one that is on vinyl i have it but i neglected to bring it with me so ian didn't bring his props i, I brought yeah well i didn't bring <laughs> it for this particular episode so there you go um so my first one and again it's kind of like with the fastball situation there was two singles off of this album but it didn't live up to the album previous and it was blues travelers straight on till morning it came out in 1997 uh it came out after four uh which was their big hit and that was those big shoes to fill for that to you know as a follow-up to that yeah. big hit so i think it kind of got lost and the and it was unfortunately once that album got lost every album that came out after it was pretty much yeah. lost as well but straight on till morning i would go as far as to say could be better than four so if you get a chance to listen in to it, in some ways, yeah, yeah, in some ways, there's, I don't know, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a toss up because Four is a great album, but as for as a Blues Traveler fan, I tend to go to Straight On Till Morning sometimes before I'll go to Four. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, if you get a chance, check out Straight On Till Morning. Came out ninety seven. Good album. So sticking with nineteen ninety eight, I gotta go with the Living End self titled album. This came out. Uh, this is an Australian punk band. You know, if you're a fan of that uh, mid to late 90s punk rock, this is definitely a great one. And I would put this up there with a lot of the other great punk rock albums of that uh, era. You know, it's an album that it probably didn't get the airplay that it really deserved when it first came out. Uh, there are a couple of minor hits off here, but, um, you know, it's an album that I first heard. It's probably 90, like late 99 was the first time I heard this. And as, as soon as I, I heard it, I knew I had to buy it on CD and, uh, you know, it, it's an album that I've listened to a bunch. And I've listened to a couple of other albums that came out after this one. Yeah, some of them are okay, but nothing that they did, I think, ever really lived up to this album. So, okay, for my next one, uh, it's uh, a band that didn't really exist for very long. Um, Sorted Humor, uh, their album uh, Light Music for Dying People, came out in 1993. Uh this is one of those bands that, like I said, they didn't exist very long. They only released this album and an EP uh, called Tony. The They had a lot of members in their band that were kind of from other bands. But primarily... So like a super group kind of thing? In then? a sense. But it was just kind of like like Adam Duritz it plays on this album. He sings on this album. A couple other members of Counting Crows play on this album. It was kind of like, almost like a jam album, kind of as I okay. understood it. And... Um, 
I that was the only reason I bought it is because it had other members of Counting Crows on it, and that's it was right around the same time that August and Everything After came out. Yeah. So I was really into the Counting Crows thing that was going on, and surprisingly, I love the album, and it's very weird. It's called very indie. I would even consider it more like late eighties indie. Yeah. Uh, from where this album was and the artists that came from it went on after it, there's another band called Engine Eighty Eight. Um, that pretty much was this band moving forward. Yeah. But this album is just really a snapshot of that period and kind of like a bunch of friends just making an album. That's the only way I could really describe it. So sticking with that uh, punk rock vibe, I'm going back a couple of years to 1996, and that is Destruction by Definition by the Suicide Machines. The Suicide Machines are a local southeastern Michigan band. I believe they're from just outside of Detroit. You know, this is like quintessential 90s punk music. Um, You know, I would definitely put this album up there with, you know, Dookie and a lot of those other great punk albums of the 90s. A little Uh, bit more aggressive. It is a little bit harder, a little bit more, you know, kind of uh, maybe not as, you know, as mainstream kind of punk as some of the stuff that Rancid and Green Day were doing in the 90s. But, um, you know, it's an album that if you haven't checked it out and you are a a punk fan, It's a great one. You know, beginning to end, a bunch of just absolutely great tracks on this one. So for my next one, this is the one that actually does exist on vinyl, and I have it, but I didn't bring it with me. Uh, It's uh, Kansas, the band Kansas. uh, Their album that came out in 1994, Freaks of Nature. This one gets lost everywhere. Like, a lot of fans just don't even acknowledge it. I don't know why. It's, um, It's a really good album, and it's, at that time period, the band was, band members were coming and going. But this still had a lot of the original band members, and it's as a much chunk a, of them. Yeah, it's as much a, a Kansas album as anything that came out in the early '80s. But it's really good. It, it you should give it a listen. Uh, Freaks of Nature by Kansas. I think I've only listened to it. I think once. I but, had it on uh, CD back in the day. Yeah, so that's probably when I heard it. But yeah, uh, yeah it is a good album. So I'm gonna stay in my 1996 era and go with "As Good as Dead" by Local H. Uh, I believe Local H is also another Southeastern Michigan band, aren't they? I, I believe they are that from I'm the area. Not from, I'm not sure. But uh, Local H, I, I, they had a couple of, I, there was definitely minor, a, couple, a couple of minor hits yeah. that they had off this album. And this is uh, some yellow vinyl. But yeah. uh, this was uh, an album that, I don't remember when I heard this first. I know I was in high school, so it was probably like 90, probably not too long after this came out, 96 or 97. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it was kind of really in the same vein as Lalo was all their, like, mid-90s alternative bands. And I think that's probably why they kind of got swept under, under the rug. Yeah, lost in the mix. Yeah, that's yeah. probably a good way to put it. But, um, you know, just another one of those albums that beginning and end, there's maybe two or three tracks I'd probably skip on this. But this is another one of those bands that, uh, you know, I have listened to some of their other albums. And they, they just It just doesn't live up to what they did on this album. Whatever happened to PJ Souls was, in a, was a pretty good album. I think that's the one that came out after. It this. was the one that came after this one, but that also was a bit more popular too. It was. That got a little bit more airplay, but I yeah. think it got a lot of airplay because of this album, right? The popularity that fed off of this one, yeah. yeah. So for my next one, uh, this band, Kula Shaker. I know you're familiar through me, familiar with yeah. them. Actually, I, there's a couple of people I know that are big Kula really? Shaker fans. Yeah. Um, kind of a modern day psychedelic rock band. Uh, they they had a couple of hits early on in the mid 90s uh they did a cover of hush deep purple uh which ended up in the movie i know what you did last summer yeah uh and they had a little bit of success with their first album but their second album peasants pigs and astronauts came out in 97 is by far infinitely better than their first album and i like their first album but uh peasants pigs and astronauts is my choice for that because it, it didn't get any, really, any recognition no, at all. None. Um, I think they had one single off of it that got a little bit of recognition, but very little. Yeah. And then they disappeared because uh, the band kind of broke up after that uh, anyway. But um, I love that album. And I'm not big on psychedelic rock, but they they, they do it well. They do, yeah, they did they, a good they, job with Kind of album. a good balance where it's still just kind of rock with just a hint of psychedelia in it. Yeah. So you guys know I've talked about the band Hum on this channel before and their album You'd Prefer an Astronaut, which is an album that was really big, you know, in, in the 90s for me personally. Mm-hmm. It was a really important album for me. But their album that came out after that, 
It's called Downward is Heaven. Downward is Heavenward. This is an album that came, it came out in 1998. It didn't get the airplay that I really thought it would. I think there was like one minor hit off of this album. But as for, as big as I mean, obviously you prefer an astronaut wasn't a huge album, but it was big enough to to kind of to to give me some expectations of this album doing a lot better than it did. Yeah. And you know, this is probably this isn't a better album than yeah. than you prefer an astronaut, but it's a better album than the airplay that it got. Right, and that's kind of really the consistent factor with a lot of these is people might know these albums. They may have gotten a little bit of recognition, but nowhere near what they really deserve. What they should have, yeah. yeah. So for my last one, um, I chose Pat Benatar's Gravity is Rainbow from 1993. I This was kind of, she really didn't make many albums after this. I think she only did two albums after this. Yeah. I mean, she still tours, but she's a sem- semi-retired as far as I can tell. Uh, but this came out in 1993, and it was kind of the end of her like stretch of of you know, consistent records, but it was very different. It had a much more kind of acoustic feel to it. It kind of got away from that eighties rock that she was kind of known for. Um, and kind of away from the ballads too. Um, but it, it was kind of more of a, uh, like a duet album in terms of between her and her husband, which is her guitarist. And I think that's where it really kind of works well. Cause it did bring up more of like that acoustic guitar, and, and having a little bit more of a, a real style to it other yeah. than what she was doing in the 80s. Yeah, she had evolved her music. It was an ev- evolution for yeah. sure. Um, so, yeah, check out Gravity's Rainbow by Pat Benatar. That's was 1993. Album. It's a good good choice. Well, that's all we got for you today, guys. Thanks for checking the show out. Let us Drop us a comment down below. Let us know about what you guys think of these albums. What are some of your favorite uh, underrated albums of the 90s because there's a whole host of them out there we, we could have picked from absolutely but uh if you enjoyed the episode make sure you give us the old thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below that's all we got until next time talk to y'all later keep on spinning peace <laughs>